Hello everyone, welcome to the Narc Survivor YouTube channel. Before I begin, please hit that thumbs up button down below to show your support. Thank you. Weird Behaviours of People Abused by Narcissists Narcissists emotionally and psychologically abuse their victims. They need their victims' emotional reactions. It feeds them. It makes them feel alive, which is why they will often engage in denial, blame shifting, projection, gaslighting, and the double bind. They will devalue and degrade their victims, and they will give them the silent treatment. Because it brings them joy to see their victims on their own, in the pit of misery and suffering that they have created for them. Which is why they will often engage in sabotage and smear campaigns followed by triangulation, manipulation and control. Because they're covert malignant narcissists, they're harmful and dangerous. They're intending to produce deterioration in their victims. They're disposed to cause harm, suffering and distress deliberately. Because they feel animosity, bitterness and hatred. Although they often won't show it openly. And instead it will be covert because they may fear being exposed or getting in trouble with the law. But that does not diminish the amount of hatred they may feel towards their victims. And in fact, it may worsen these feelings because they lack empathy and they have a strong sense of entitlement. But regardless of that, their fear of the possible consequences may be enough to prevent them from engaging in the brutally violent and destructive acts that they would otherwise love to participate in. So instead they will settle for emotional and psychological abuse. But just because they're not putting their hands on their victims, that doesn't make it any less damaging. They will engage in exploitation to achieve their own demands at the expense of their victims' rights. But they will keep a code of silence, which is an unwritten understanding among a group of people such as their enablers, flight monkeys, family members, friends or co-workers. To not tell if something happens that may be illegal, immoral or unethical. The narcissist may also intimidate the members of the group and threats may be used. There may also be an implied fear of revenge or social isolation, so they cover it up very well, to where there may not be any physical evidence of the abuse. Which is why I decided to create this video of the weird behaviours of people abused by narcissists. Because this will give you the vital information you need to know if an alleged victim is being abused. So with that being said, here are 10 weird behaviours of people abused by narcissists. 1. Disconnected from their environment. The victim is gaslighted constantly to the point where they may begin to doubt their own memory, perception and sanity until they start to feel detached. And then their way of thinking, feelings, sounds, images and other sensations begin to develop their own independent existence outside of the external reality, which is something the narcissist will use to blame and shame them and label them as crazy or weird, which may then cause the victim to sink into a deep state of depression and anxiety, where they may begin to develop addictions and obsessions in an attempt to repress their feelings and numb the pain, because they're seeking an escape from their current reality, and they're trying to separate themselves from the narcissist, because the narcissist is trying to hold on to them for dear life, so the victim's addictions and obsessions, which they are using to distract themselves from the abuse and numb their pain, may also be used against them, which may further traumatize them and cause them to dip in and out of psychotic episodes, where they may feel as though they are temporarily losing touch with reality. And they may even choose to isolate themselves if they're not isolated by the narcissist already. 
because they fear being disbelieved or misunderstood. And they may also be experiencing self-blame and emotional exhaustion as a result of the gradual erosion of their self-esteem, which is why it may seem as though they are always alone and they are never engaged in social activities, which is exactly what the narcissist wants because it prevents them from hearing from the abuse as then they will never find the understanding or the validation that they need. Two, sets aside basic needs to feed the narcissist. The victim may once have been full of energy and enthusiasm where they were focused on achieving a particular aim or result and they had all of these goals and dreams for the future but upon encountering the narcissist, it all faded away. And now it's like the victim's existence revolves around meeting the narcissist's demands and expectations, as they've had to abandon and stop pursuing their dreams and aspirations in order to keep the narcissist happy. But no matter what the victim does or does not do, the narcissist will never be satisfied and instead the victim just ends up being emotionally starved because they're giving all of their energy and efforts to something that isn't serving them and they're getting nothing back in return or they're being starved of love and affection which may cause them to develop a supernatural sixth sense where they are highly attuned to their environment because their mind is desperately trying to fill a void and to perceive a sense of importance which has been stripped from them by the narcissist to where they feel like they're not even a person. Three, hypervigilance. The victim may be tense, nervous and irritable. They may be on edge. They may be worried and afraid because they're expecting something unpleasant to happen as that is their usual experience. So they are already anticipating it and they may be worrying or panicking because they don't want to experience it. As a result of the trauma and abuse, they may feel unsafe and they may have developed a start response, which is an extreme response to an intense stimulus or the body's physical reaction to fear. So as a result of the trauma and abuse, this response may be heightened which means that the stimulus will produce a more pronounced response that likely will, will not affect other people the same way because they haven't been traumatized and abused. The victim has been repeatedly and with a similar stimulus on many occasions, so they will be abnormally alert to potential dangers or threats to where they will always be paying a lot of attention and trying to notice possible dangers. Which of course is another thing that the narcissist will use to their advantage because they need their victim to be in an elevated state where they're constantly assessing potential threats around them as that is how the narcissist gets the attention they're looking for. So the victim will be in a constant state of fear or anticipation because they're always looking for signs of manipulation or abuse as a result of the trauma that obliterated their sense of safety and trust. So they have developed the survival mechanism to protect themselves from being hurt again, to where at times they may even be paranoid as they are overly focused on spotting red flags, which is something the narcissist will exploit even further to maximize their narcissistic supply. So it is very important for the victim to exit the abusive environment and then seek professional support so that they can heal from the abuse and trauma. Four, distrust. The victim will develop a sense of distrust and even a fear of love, intimacy and connection because they've learned to associate it with abuse, trauma and pain. So they may see everyone as a threat and they may be very concerned about other people's motives because they've already witnessed the abusive behaviors of someone who they once trusted 
So now they've developed a lot of anxiety. They feel like they can't trust anyone and they may not even trust themselves because the narcissist has eroded their self-esteem and made them believe that they're not who they think they are. Five, afraid of doing what they love and people pleasing. The narcissist may punish the victim for their achievements and success because they are jealous of them. So the victim may learn to identify their joy, talents, hobbies and success with abuse and mistreatment because they have been groomed and conditioned into behaving in a certain way over a long period of time. And they have been trained to accept certain circumstances, certain conditions that are connected with and relevant to their actions, which is why the victim may fear success because they fear negative reactions and punishment, which may cause them to develop anxiety, agitation and restlessness. And they will feel unhappy and insecure because they're constantly walking on eggshells and afraid of upsetting the narcissist by doing what they love. So they may just disappear altogether and then you won't cure from them anymore because they're already anticipating the backlash which is exactly what the narcissist wants because they want to attract the most attention and praise. That is very important to them. So they will try to destroy whatever is good about the victim and the victim may just go along with it. As a result of the abuse, victims develop a tendency to please people excessively because they fear confrontation or rejection and they may desire a sense of love and belonging which is lacking from their abusive relationship. So they may always be focused on everyone but themselves and trying to make them happy as a post-traumatic stress response known as fawning, which often causes them to, to neglect their own well-being. Six, comparing themselves to other people. The victim may be constantly comparing themselves to other people and even blaming themselves for their own abuse. Because narcissists are often romantically involved with more than just one person, who they will then triangulate against the victim until the victim begins to feel like they are not enough. And then they may continually seek the narcissist's validation, approval and praise, which is exactly what the narcissist wants because they can never have too much attention and they will feel like they're in control of the victim as a result of their self-blame. But the victim is not to blame for being mistreated. The narcissist is to blame for mistreating them. Seven, idealizing new relationships. The victim may show a desire to rush into a new relationship where they are being unrealistic about their new partner. And they may see them as being perfect or as better in, than in reality because they're desperately seeking happiness and validation to where they may overlook red flags and potential problems. Eight, difficulty expressing emotions. They have difficulty opening up and being vulnerable. They may feel disconnected from their own emotions and at times they may even seem emotionless and expressionless. Which is something that they developed as a coping mechanism to shield themselves from the narcissist's harmful behaviour. But it may also be because they're not used to socialising or expressing themselves. As the narcissist just viewed them as an object or as an extension of themselves. So they treated them as an emotional sponge rather than a separate person with their own wants, feelings and needs. And because narcissists are so dominant and overbearing, victims may begin to doubt their own emotions and even their own natural and intuitive way of acting or thinking as a result of the emotional disconnect. Nine, suffering from imposter syndrome. The victim may doubt their own achievements and feel like a fraud 
They may be unsure of their identity, despite their skills, talents, abilities and qualifications, which can be common symptoms among those who are very ambitious and successful. But the victim will also experience it as a result of the narcissist's gaslighting and manipulation, which has caused them to doubt themselves. And it's exactly what the narcissist wants, because they don't want their victim to be confident in themselves or their own abilities. 10. Self-destructive behaviors. The victim may often reflect on the abuse and they may hear the narcissist's voice in their heads, which then affects their own inner voice and may increase the risk of them engaging in self-sabotaging and self-destructive behaviors. The narcissist conditions their victim to self-destruct to where the victim may become anxious and depressed and they may develop unhealthy coping strategies and addictions such as alcohol, tobacco, or rec recreational drugs. The victim may even self-harm and engage in suicidal ideation. And they may even attempt suicide and take their own lives because they just can't deal with the shame. Narcissists are shame-based people who are doing everything they can to avoid reflecting on their shame. So they will often deflect their shame onto the victim to where the victim may then acquire a tendency to punish themselves as a result of the narcissist's constant put downs and criticisms. The narcissist will destroy the victim's dreams and aspirations. They will condition the victim to believe that they are undeserving of anything pleasant or enjoyable by creating a sense of worthlessness in them until the victim feels completely hopeless as they sink deeper into the depression and anxiety until it becomes unbearable, insufferable and unendurable because they feel like there's no way out. They feel like they wouldn't be able to escape from this harmful and dangerous situation even if they tried. So they develop this deeply embedded sense of helplessness and powerlessness and it makes them feel like they don't want to live another day. Which is typically when the narcissist will try to ramp up the abuse to push the victim over the edge. As a victim, suicide is a satisfying achievement to a narcissist. It makes them feel powerful and significant to know that they were the cause of someone taking their own life. And it also makes them feel like they are untouchable because they've practically committed a murder without leaving any signs to reveal that they were the instigators of it. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.